Hi, I'm the Insect Inspector, a citizen scientist concerned about the small things and why flying insects are in decline worldwide. It was a cursory glance at a spider's web one day that started this talk. It was an old web that should have been littered with the remains of prey, but it was empty. The sight led me to getting tangled up in a different web, one of geopolitical and business interests that are putting insect survival at risk. Let me take you on that journey by starting with a story. In Africa, I found a starving chameleon. I paid local boys to catch some crickets to revive it. They returned empty-handed. Their father said there are no longer any around since a mobile phone mast had been put up. As it was a place where neither habitat loss nor insecticides could be to blame, I took him seriously. Looking at the signal on my phone, I wondered if EMR, the electromagnetic radiation from wireless communication systems, might be the cause of the global decline. So I set out to test this possibly catastrophic hypothesis. The chameleon died. In Germany, the Krefeld Entomological Society has been regularly surveying nature reserves. Recent findings show that in the last 30 years, flying insects have declined by 75%. Their report points to a single factor other than land use and climate change as the reason, but they don't know what it is. The survey sites are close to densely populated areas dotted with an extensive network of phone masts. This infrastructure has grown over 30 years in line with mobile phones going from a luxury to a necessity. So I found a correlation between insect decline and man-made electromagnetic radiation. But correlation does not mean causation. There has to be a causal link. I am also an IT guy, an early evangelist of the benefits of technology. I first sent data over a mobile phone in the 80s and have gone from struggling to find a signal to having a universal service available anywhere, anytime. The industry has come a long way in a short time with new subscribers signing up every couple of seconds. It's an industry worth over $17 trillion. There are 30 million radio masts worldwide. 1% of global energy is used to power this utility. It's also been a money spinner for governments. The Spectrum auction netted the UK Treasury over 26 billion pounds. But is it safe? EMR transmission guidelines are based on microwave ovens. They are all about the specific absorption rate of heat by human flesh. So who's in charge of SARS outside the kitchen? The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection is the body that issued the threshold values to which the industry works. The Commission, an NGO whose origin and structure are none too clear, set out these guidelines 18 years ago. In the UK, Ofcom regulates the industry, and I asked if they had any research on the impact of EMR on insects. No, they didn't. They referred me back to the Commission, as they are responsible for the effects of electromagnetic fields in the living environment, who said, and I quote, it's not something we have considered. So our hypothesis is set in the context of a fast-moving, under-regulated global business with the goal of covering 95% of the land mass with modulated microwave radiation 24-7. In short, we're all part of a massive experiment based on a use now, find out later model. But hey, I'm getting it carried away. I'm the insect inspector, not a conspiracy theorist. Though what has been sold off is the habitat they inhabit. We're looking for a provable causal link. So let's start with bees, a good bioindicator. As a beekeeper, I was examining a hive one day to see if they were healthy. I had my phone on silent to take a picture of anything untoward. When you break into a 30,000 resident high-rise block, you have to go in ninja style, hoping they won't notice. All was calm till a call activated the phone. The bees erupted in an aggressive swarm. So I have direct experience with EMR and behaviour change. And yes, I did get stung. But are there more robust scientific studies to support our case? If you look at peer-reviewed papers on insects like fruit flies and ants, EMR is shown to affect their ability to feed and breed. If bees are hived close to radio masts, they lose orientation and swarm unnecessarily. 
Also, computer modelling of beetles and other hexapods shows that EMR heats them up with a prediction that if higher frequencies are licensed, they will fry. A panel of experts reviewed over 900 studies and concluded EMR plays a role in the decline of insects. What is certain is that our radiation is detectable by many flying invertebrates. After all, they do have antennae. So we are beginning to find causal links of EMR interfering with insect biology systems. To learn more, you have to subscribe to view the research behind the abstracts available on the net. It's not cheap. But then I got lucky. Hundreds of radiation research scientists signed a petition to the UN saying that EMR was out of control as nobody knows what the long-term effects of exposure is going to be. They called for all governments to protect us from an emerging public health crisis as effects are showing up in their research that include cancers and damage to DNA in humans. They argued that 5G, the frequencies needed to provide ultra-high frequency capacity for a gigabit society, should not be introduced without pre-market safety testing, not least as the World Health Organization has classified Wi-Fi radiation as a cancer risk. Nonetheless, don't expect any insurance companies to cover you for future jeopardy. Most digital products include guidelines that state, when using a device, keep it away from the body. With a handheld device, how is this possible? It is the get out of jail card for an industry set up to avoid future litigation. I digress. So I emailed the scientists. I had responses from around the world saying, you're onto something. Some included links to research from behind the paywall. It's scary stuff. Peer-reviewed papers showed EMR exerts numerous effects at a molecular level that leads to tissue and organ dysfunction. Their petition is yet to get the attention it deserves. However, a UN-funded study into the conservation and sustainable use of pollinators concludes that 40% of species face extinction. The usual suspects like pesticides and climate change are fingered, but despite strong evidence, there is not even a footnote about EMR. I spoke to a professor who presented the findings to a parliamentary select committee and asked why. He replied, the UN knows best. The trouble with this approach is that it informs government thinking. For example, an environmental statement on the impact of 5G by DEFRA states that while we know there are negative effects on the environment, the positives are much better because you won't have to go to meetings. Now, I've been working on this over a relatively bug-free summer. The conclusion of National Insect Week is that numbers are down. One thing about insects is that most people don't like them. So a lack of bugs is a benefit. You don't have to flick, swat or spray to death what might, if provoked, bite, sting or annoy you. So why isn't the evidence more conclusive? Firstly, research requires funding. Secondly, insects are difficult to study. And lastly, in science, an experiment has to be repeatable to be believable. One scientist assessing these studies had to exclude his own findings as it was a one-off. So the wireless industry muddies the water by saying the evidence is not conclusive and points the finger at other causes. Even the windshield effect, i.e. no bugs splattered on cars anymore, is put down to aerodynamic design. Well, I drive an old car and didn't have to clean the screen once doing a cross-country journey down back roads when sex-obsessed young adults should be on the wing. One thing for sure is that cellular masks focus their energy down onto insect habitat. The industry claims that they don't produce much power, but is that true? When the police estimate the size of a crowd nowadays, they find out how many new connections have been made to the area network. Imagine the power required at Glastonbury when they put up temporary masks to service over 100,000 people in a field sending selfies. Let me give you one last piece of anecdotal evidence. I was sailing near the Isle of Wight in a busy shipping lane ran with ferries and pleasure craft. It's also a naval complex. The UK's new aircraft carrier came out on manoeuvres, probably as an intensive an area of EMR signal anywhere. Now I've deliberately stayed away from talking about frequencies, harmonics or the inverse square law, as that is a rabbit hole down which we could disappear. But I had an app that measures this stuff. The air was a thick soup of electrosmog. 
One thing about yachties is at the end of a sale, half-eaten pizzas, beer cans, cakes and cola are just chucked away. A perfect bug fest. As the insect inspector, I was on the lookout. Around the marina trash bins on a warm still evening, there was not a single fly. So if I haven't persuaded you that EMR impacts insects, I have convinced myself. Now the big prize to one of the most profitable industries on earth is not wanting us to download more cute videos of cats. The Internet of Things is where the treasure really lies. It is why 5G is vital. The providers need more connections by augmenting the existing infrastructure to support AI automatons like Alexa and Siri. But they also want to put up microcell masks down every street that will expose us all to massively increases doses of radiation. However, in Ofcom's document on the benefits of 5G, people hardly get a mention. It's all about robotics, drones and self-drive cars. After all, you don't want a null zone in your neighbourhood if you let your kids play on the street. Though they are more likely to be close to a screen zapping stuff while getting zapped by radiation in return. Wireless tech is good for government, the military and the surveillance society. Cyberspace is a geopolitical battlefield fought in the energy fields around us. There are people who believe cell towers are wired for more power output than is required, meaning they could emit signals powerful enough to subdue a crowd. In short, they are weaponized. I'm here to talk about insects. Do we need them? Most staple crops are wind pollinated. In parts of Asia, people fertilize fruit trees with paintbrushes. But without insects to help break down and dispose of waste, it would be a messy world indeed. Underappreciated for their role in our food chain, insects are the sole food source for many creatures, so we lose them at our peril. It was said that after nuclear war, cockroaches would survive. But that may not be the case with the next generation of wireless that is experimenting with frequencies of 60 gigahertz and above. In toxology, everything is a poison. It's all a question of the dose. Somebody even OD'd on carrot juice. The insects are absorbing EMR daily. Let's hope we work out an antidote before it's too late. Otherwise, we will face a dystopian world where wireless drones will be cleaning up the mess of our own making. So next time you see a spider's web, stop for a minute and take a look. If it's empty, Spare a thought for what might happen if the small things disappear.